Six story chapters, six challenges. Arthur Becomes is a Red Dead Redemption 2 mini-series that will completely transform the game as we progress. Every chapter of Arthur Morgan's story will come with a brand new challenge, ranging anywhere from gun-specific restrictions to ridiculous modern novelties. We'll see Arthur adopt new abilities, face new obstacles, and traverse the West in never-before-seen ways over the course of six chaotic episodes. Can we actually complete the game while dealing with Arthur's ever-changing identity crisis? Well, only time will tell. So join us as we continue our journey in Chapter 3 as Arthur becomes the Demolitioners. The Demolitionist is a simple man. A working man. He's most comfortable when he's on the job and covered in a dusty combination of gunpowder and the ashes of his fallen enemies. And hey, I'll tell you something for free. You won't find a better demo for hire anywhere in the USA and that is a guarantee. Which is exactly why the Vandalin gang have traveled so far north in search of his five-star service. And you know what? They're in luck. Because today we'll be trying to beat Chapter 3 using throwable explosives only. This means explosive bullets are not permitted, explosive arrows are basically illegal. It's, uh, yeah, just good old-fashioned dynamite and fire bottles from here on out. Well, wherever possible, anyway, you know how this game is, Jesus Christ. And so off we went, taking the first steps in what would be a much longer journey than I ever could have anticipated. Our first shift as the demolitionist was little more than a grocery run to begin with, but after picking up some Fruit Loops for Uncle from the general store, things got much uglier. Fortunately, I've had a little bit of experience with the first few missions of this chapter while working on my No Kill series, so I felt pretty confident going into this section with just eight sticks of explosive death at my disposal. Sadie's got the reins here, so she's the one running this guy over. We know that from TGB. So that's not a vehicle kill on our part. All right, let's... let's give this our best shot. I honestly want to leave as much to this up to Sadie as I can, because I don't want to waste dynamite on just like one individual enemy every single time like that. I would love to be able to get like a couple of people per stick, but it's just not going to happen like that every time. Sadie, how you going? Going pretty damn good, honestly. Yep, and then they'll run off because they're absolutely terrified of this unit that just decides to wield explosives instead of anything else. I'd be fucking scared too. I, I'd be I'd be running for the hills as well. I can't blame them. Now, okay, what I want you to understand about Red Dead Challenge Runs is that there is no greater enemy than Rockstar Games themselves. It doesn't really matter what you're doing in this game. The developers are working against you directly at all times. They're keeping you in check, you know, making sure you never stray too far from the intended gaming experience. They will attempt to smite you at every turn. And unfortunately, this can happen much earlier into a run than what you could ever expect. This guy right here, right? So this is the guy that's meant to strangle you, or at least attempt to. Wait. Wait, really? Oh, no. <laughs> this mission right here is a textbook example of the harsh restrictions Red Dead 2 has to offer. So we got three wanted criminals making their escape on this train, right? All of which are under the protection of one devastating central rule. Hey, that's you can't kill them. Basically, none of these blokes can be burnt to a crisp with molotovs, nor can they be sent to the afterlife through the power of dynamite. This is another mission I've had hours of experience with while attempting to beat the game without kills, and I can say with pretty much absolute certainty that this man cannot be shot, lassoed, punched, or blinked at without the game failing you instantly. Now, these are of course not the preferred methods of the demolitionist, but unfortunately, the first enemy must be thrown off the train and knocked out in order to progress. We do get a little bit of leeway with the second criminal though, which is nice since you can avoid his knockout by breaking out of his grapple and simply running away. The leeway disappears in an instant though, because the third guy 
Well, the only way to beat the third guy is by beating his forehead in until he stops moving, so... Yeah, explosives are just out of the equation here, since the mission ends with placing these law-breaking cretins in custody. So I guess blowing them apart or setting them alight just wouldn't make much sense continuity-wise. So the professionalism of the Demolitionist had already been tested quite a bit here, as we'd come off second best to Rockstar's developers just two missions into the challenge. I am dead inside. But hey, the game was entitled Red Dead Redemption for no reason. No, old man Demolitionist guaranteed nothing but the reddest, deadest enemies in the shifts to come. It was time to go in Molotovs blazing. I want to see limbs flying. I want to see toes so charred they look like strips of beef jerky. I want the sounds of explosive weaponry to literally blow my eardrums to smith. For a chapter dedicated to a demolitionist for hire, we hadn't been given a whole lot of opportunity to do much demolishing. Here we were forced to take yet another group prisoner for the local law enforcement, completely disregarding the natural instincts and needs of a demolitionist. Fortunately, the tasks to follow were a little bit more our style. We got to destroy a little moonshine shack, which was very cool, and we got to destroy multiple meat sacks as well, which was even cooler. I can take out two birds with one stick of dynamite there which is nice oh god there are so many people in this mission oh is that a twofer right there oh you love to see it you love to see it the absolute screams of pain and terror you love to hear them oh god good stuff good stuff Thank you, Bill. Just ran out of, just ran out of dynamite, mate. You're a legend. Now, since this was the first time the demo had to restock his ammo supply, it was time to make our very first trip to his local supplier. Yeah, mate, no worries. We've got eight sticks of dynamite for just eight bucks, and if there's some scheming bastard out there who reckons he's got them for cheaper, we'll beat it by ten percent. You clever, get dead. Where lowest prices are just the beginning. Anyway, yeah. After buying some more ammo, we stepped into a mission that was a bit more in line with what I was expecting from this chapter. A chance for the demolitionist to go all in, to unleash the fury that comes with 25 years of domestic terrorism experience. Shit! Hey! They can say something! Oh, great. Let's go! Arthur, let's go! Wait, yeah. what? Whoa, hang on a second. Why does. Why does Uncle not have a beard right now? After a brief chase with a horde of very angry individuals, we found ourselves trapped within the tiny confines of this barn, surrounded by enemy fire, cow shit, and with no option of retreat. If we all wanted to make it out of here alive, we'd have to bring our A-game. The demo would need to showcase only the finest of his skills, because, well, our very lives were on the line and there was barely any room to move around in here, let alone any room for error. See, we got, we got a nice little, uh... Oh no. Did that... <laughs> Holy shit. I'm so sorry, Bill. I'm so... Bill. Tell me you're alright, Bill. Oh, he's good, he's good. He's a, he's a soldier, this fella. Good stuff. Making good progress. Uh, how many fellas are over here? Not many. Let's see if we can hit that guy over on the horse, being a cheeky fella over there. Oh, that's not good. Bill, I am so sorry. You are just copying it today. Now, this may come as a surprise to you, but I actually did manage to hit more than just Bill during this fight, and after a few more enemies were taken out, we reached a surprisingly simple victory. Moving on to the second phase of the mission did worry me a little, though, as we approached yet another section of the game that demanded a stealthy solution. So these fellas, right? I've never seen what happens if you just throw a Molotov at them. Because usually it sort of instructs you to stab one of them behind the back. So let's see how the game reacts to this doozy. This is the one that Uncle gets, so I'll take him out first. <laughs> Go for it, Uncle. Take out the other one. Oh, okay. That was uh, 
That was a lot easier than what I what I thought it was going to be. The rest of the mission was another clash in the bushes, which could have two meanings if your mind is sick enough. But the point I really want to hammer home here about these enemy waves is that they're generally pretty easy. As long as I focus on conserving my ammo a little bit, and as long as I leave enough chance for the boys to take a few enemies out for me, there's really no problem with these types of encounters at all. I mean, sometimes your companions can be quite passive in these sections. Can you take a single shot, please? Dude. This what you're for, boy? Go. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god, Lenny. He sits on his ass all day. But usually eight sticks of dynamite and a couple of molotovs is more than enough to get them up and moving again. It's like a laxative for action. You know, first they don't want to move at all, then all of a sudden you've destroyed six enemies and they're rushing into battle without a second of hesitation. I'm going to put as much faith in our boy as we can, but... Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. We're doing fine. That's some good energy, Lenny. I'm liking it. He's right there. Oh, okay. Swift. I respect it. On the next resupply, I began thinking a little bit about carry capacity. I knew that unlocking Molotovs for purchase here wasn't available until a mission called The Fine Joys of Tobacco, but the mere thought of having a reliable 16 throwballs at my disposal was quite enticing. It's just too bad that the atrocities required to gain the ingredients to craft Molotovs were both far too brutal and time consuming without the use of a bow and arrow. I've got to throw this dynamite stick in a way that it's far enough that it kills them but doesn't ruin them. Because if they, if you ruin the pigs, you can't get anything off them. So, oh my god, that, that rolled way closer than what I thought it would. Fortunately, there hadn't yet come a mission where my current ammo situation had really been a problem, and so I didn't really go out of my way to fix it at all. Going into this chapter, I thought for sure that the demolitionists' limited supply of throwables would be my greatest challenge, but no. This man was a professional, and what he had was all he needed. And now it's time to rob some banks. Weren't you wondering how the Vandalin gang was gonna pay for the demolitionist services? I mean, this bloke isn't cheap, but you get what you pay for, and it's hard to put a price tag on experience. Hello, hello. Jump in there for me, mate. Oh. We... Okay, he's fine. All right, good, good, good. It ain't against the laws of the challenge. All right. Well, of course we're going to blow them up. Do you even understand who you're talking to? Reckon I'm going to have to blow them. Yep. Okay. <laughs> if that isn't in character, I don't know what is, dude. I am planting the bomb. I am planting the bomb. I am planting the bomb. I am planting, I am planting the bomb. Here we go. The moment of truth. Please. Might want to get the fuck to the other end of the room, though. This is what we've been waiting for. It's not going to kill me from here, is it? All right, good stuff. Wasn't as big a boom as I was expecting, but you know, you get what you're given. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I said, come out now. We have caused some extra problems for ourselves, though. There's no denying that. You can't have your explosions and, and eat them too, as the old saying goes. Oh, I don't want to use that, turns out. So I'm going to use the number keys right quick. <laughs> this is cheating, but good cheating, you know what I'm saying? If you're unfamiliar with the number keys strategy, it's basically using the number keys on my keyboard to cycle through weapons that I wouldn't normally be able to during a forced dead eye section. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's by far one of the most useful techniques in these sorts of challenge runs. There we go. I actually can't move right now. Okay, there we go, there we go. God, okay, that went way better than what I was expecting. Good stuff. Can they handle that single guy right there? Stuff it. You know what? Let's be a little bit reckless. Hell yeah. Okay. What a heist. Oh, can we get a triple? Holy shit. I'm in love with the demolitionist. The man's thirst for mayhem is unrivaled. Oh God, hurry up. I'm not fucking bulletproof. I'll be seeing yous. Holy shit. I, I thought I thought I took Karen out for a sec. Come on, let's go. All right. No, that. Where's my hat? The miner's hat. Oh wait, I can get it off my horse, we're good. 
We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Forget it. Forget it. There we go. All right. Love to see that. Gotta beat that train, Morgan. I'm doing my best. This horse doesn't really have a lot of speed to it. These guys should just be happy they got away with all of their limbs intact, let's be honest. Hello and welcome to Twitch Chat is More Intelligent Than I Am, Part 94. At this point I was notified that my trips to Bunnings for Dynamite could be shortened if I just spend some of the demo's hard-earned cash to buy the fast travel board. This board allows me to not only fast travel from the main camp, but also from any small camp I make while I'm on the road. Very epic. Additionally, if I didn't mind spending just a couple more bucks, I could upgrade the ammunition wagon, which would grant me access to Molotovs whenever I needed them. So yeah, fuck you, fine joys of tobacco. So yeah, you're gay. Moving on, Bo and Penelope wasted more of my time, as they so often do, and Hosea was scheming a plan to turn the town of Rhodes into raging alcoholics. Can I get a giant pog in chat for alcoholism right now, please. One cart full of moonshine later, and the peaceful saloon was transformed into a nest of angry middle-aged men wielding weapons of mass destruction. Now, fortunately, it doesn't restrict us from using the dynamite, which is great. I think the small space actually might work pretty well for us. Um, oh, wait. Oh, hang on a second. Wait, are you guys just not hitting me? Oh, I thought I was, like, invincible for a sec. Okay. Bye, fellas. Just realized that a dynamite stick is gonna kill Hosea, which is not exactly what we're looking for. Let's see if I can just throw it behind him, maybe. Ah, uh, Hosea, you're a beast. Get rid of these fellas. Hosea took that fucking explosion like a champ, dude. Unbelievable display from the old man. Nicely done. Good stuff, boys. We used all of our dynamite, but we did pretty well there. Man, I am impressed by the geriatric. He's in tune with the ways of the demolitionist, and I've got to respect that. Well, shoot them then. All right. Well, I won't quite shoot them, but if you'll allow me to throw a fire bottle, then I mean we'll be good. As long as you don't drop dead here, Hosea, we're, we're good. We're golden, because it's not allowing me to throw anything now. Which sucks. Keep it moving, Jose. I'm I'm feeling oddly proud. It is a shame we can't. Wait, did I die there? Holy shit! Wait, was I really one shot from death? No. Remember how I was saying earlier that doing challenge runs in this game is really just a long battle against the developers? Well, I should also mention that it is very often a battle that can't be won through brute force but rather a battle that needs to be swayed slowly through lies and deception. It's all about tricking Rockstar into thinking you're playing the game within their rules, when in reality you're doing the most brain-dead things possible in secret. For example, this mission has a failsafe in place that basically kills either you or your companion in one shot if you aren't participating in the mission enough. <laughs> if you aren't shooting enemies, if you aren't murdering people in the street here, it's a one-shot fail regardless of how much health you have left in the tank. Except for reasons I can't quite explain, as long as you point your guns in the direction of the enemy and pretend you're going to shoot someone, the game lets you pass just fine. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't know what goes through these psychopaths' minds as they code their little missions and program their little games, but all I did know for sure is that I'd have to deal with it, because the tomfoolery wasn't just gonna stop there. The tomfoolery was a disease, a highly contagious one, and its primary symptom was agony. About a year ago now, there was a popular clip showing off a missable Red Dead 2 cutscene that can be activated by shooting this enemy instead of just speaking to him. It's hey, not how we do things. Jeb! No, wait. Ah, where were we? Where's my friend, buddy? Doing this actually changes the course of the mission somewhat, allowing you to completely skip a fist fight that ensues after the regular cutscene plays. So when we entered this mission as the demolitionist, me and my tiny ape brain expected this to be quick and simple. 
I mean, yeah, I obviously couldn't shoot the guy, that was against the rules, but there wasn't a doubt in my mind that a stick of dynamite wouldn't achieve the same effect. I was wrong. I would slowly come to realize that this was one of the most ridiculously restrictive missions I have ever attempted in this nightmare of a video game. One that would spawn a convoluted mess of schemes and strategies as I scrambled to contain the tomfoolery that was spreading through every mission. You remember the number key strat from before, right? Well, this mission doesn't normally allow you to break free from this melee stance. However, if we cycle through our items using one through nine, we can break away from this fight and pretty much run wherever we want to in the mission area. Now remember, my goal here is as simple as this. I just want to kill the guy with either a Molotov or a stick of dynamite. Nothing more, nothing less. So now that I've broken free and equipped the dynamite, you would think I could just lob one at him and be done with this altogether. But no. For whatever reason, this section does not allow you to aim, shoot, or throw anything. In fact, the whole fucking weapon wheel is disabled, which is honestly a decision I'd love to have seen Rockstar's reasoning for while in the process of making it. I soon discovered that some of the work would need to be done before entering the fist fight because there were pretty much no options left once you passed into this phase. Basically, my new idea was to plant a bunch of dynamite on the ground before going in and then ignite them while the enemy tried to beat me up. The game did allow me to ignite them, which was good, but there was a giant problem as well. I see ya. Oh my god, are you kidding me? No, please game, please. Oh, it did! but he had the intuition to run away. Don't run away from this dude. I promise you're safe. Yes, yes. What? Since when does it take so long? Yes, yes. No, where are you going? This NPC has the most advanced sense of self-preservation I have ever fucking seen. I realized I'd have to find a way to make him stay within the explosion radius if I wanted this to work, which led me to discover quite a controversial strategy involving the lasso. Plant the dynamite before entering the fight, go in, use the number keys to pull out the lasso, tie the enemy up, ignite the dynamite, and... Could it really be that simple? Could we have reached the solution to blowing this man up instead of knocking him out already? I mean, to be fair, I'm cutting out a lot of the long and boring and repetitious mind-numbing slog that happened between every single attempt of this mission, but had we really done it? Was this it? Already? Well, I mean, yeah, technically, but... I mean, I could have just ended the pain and suffering right there, I suppose. Hours had gone past, poor Twitch chat was getting restless, and yet, here I was, about to stare a blatant solution dead in the face and say, no, not good enough. I know that sounds dumb, straight up idiotic maybe, but the reason why was quite simple. Using an additional tool like the lasso somehow felt cheap and enough of me still believed that this was all possible without it. And so I know you hate me, but back I went. Back to trying to get this little bastard to stay within the explosion's radius and take the death like a man. I mean, come on, dude. Just take one for the team and just die, okay? Death's not that scary. What have you really got to fear except for- I had a plan but it was currently in pieces. What I was going for at the moment was I wanted to ignite the dynamite at my feet and then grapple the enemy so he couldn't run away. But the only issue with that was that he kept blocking my grapple and escaping at the last second, meaning I'd eventually use up all of my planted dynamite and be forced to restart the entire mission again. Articulating exactly how frustrating this process was would be basically impossible with the time I have here, but Here's some video proof of the fragility of my sanity about two hours into my attempts. Someone got here first. So there she is in all her glory. By the looks of things, it wasn't a social call. Charles said the Lester thing. After praying to Socks for another couple of minutes, I eventually realized that if you grab NPCs with a knife equipped, it holds them successfully every time. 
he couldn't block my grapple. So the plan was being glued together now. Ignite the dynamite at my feet, grab the enemy with the knife equipped so he couldn't squirm away, and then let the explosion do its job. It sounded easy enough, really, but there was just one more problem. One more piece of the puzzle that was left unsolved. How was I going to survive a point-blank explosion? This part was kind of overkill in retrospect, but we made a trip all the way into the mountains to retrieve the rare ingredient needed to craft a level 3 tonic, the strongest health tonic in the game, which I was hoping would provide the necessary health boost to survive that point-blank detonation. Here. Bam. Lock it in. Alright, I'm just gonna take the tonic. There's literally no reason why I shouldn't just take it now, you know? Oh, this is gonna be so difficult. This still has a degree of difficulty. I've gotta light it when he's close and then grab him. You're staying right here with me, fella. <laughs> I cannot fucking believe that, dude. That actually might be. That actually might be the greatest strategy we have ever used for any of these chapters. <laughs> that is actually so <laughs> fucking nice, dude. It was so simple and obvious now that I look back on it, but holding that enemy and staring into his soul as the demolitionist survives the very explosion that takes his adversary's arms and legs off is some of the most badass shit I've ever seen, so I don't care. I'm just glad we got there in the end. And thankfully, after all our hard work and suffering, the rest of the mission was a breeze. Trelawney gets tracked down, which was apparently the point of this whole thing. There's some enemies hiding amongst the corn that are taken care of easily, and although I was on the cusp of a mental breakdown after spending about four hours on this mission, I was as proud of the progress we'd made. This is well, so we've got pretty much infinite dynamite in there. People are talking. Okay. You stopped. You stopped working for us all. How'd you mean? No money in the box. Oh, get the fuck out. I'm spending all my money on dynamite. Relax. Man among us. Relax. He just said among. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Did somebody just say demolitionist explanation speed run? Probably not, unless the voices are back, in which case please help me. So chapter 3 of Red Dead 2 is actually pretty damn long as it is, and it turns out when you do a challenge run that extends some 15 minute long missions into 4 hours, it's hard to condense every detail into one video. But I'm gonna try to do it anyway, so here we go. We ended up giving Trelawney a quick hand with a simple coach robbery before moving on to the mission we'd all been waiting for. That's right, the fine joys of tobacco. The mission that would grant us access to the fine joys of being able to purchase Molotovs from our local vendor at just $1 a pop. This was unexpectedly quite an easy mission. We just had to light some fields on fire, blow some people up, and protect Sean Maguire's life at all costs. Turns out Sean had a bit of a tendency to just die out of nowhere in this mission. I'm not sure if Rockstar were trying to be clever with a sneaky attempt at foreshadowing or what, but either way, it was very annoying. After playing the role of the Irishman's bodyguard for quite a few attempts, the pieces did eventually fall into place and the job was completed oh oh my god oh that scared the absolute living shit out of me look oh my god Arthur Arthur no you're gonna get cancelled bro moving on Dutch and this guy have an argument over who's better at Halo 3 while the demolitionist gets taken hostage and tortured relentlessly in a basement somewhere here in the basement the mission is ridiculously restrictive no surprises there leaving us with no option but to fist fight the guy inside I couldn't even escape from the fist fight by cycling through my weapons with the number keys either because all of my weapons had already been stripped away from me eventually I got to the tedious task of grappling and pushing him up the stairs which then broke me from the fight and allowed me to run around freely. And just when I thought I'd escaped, just when I thought I'd solved the mission as easy as that, there was a dramatic turn of events. The mission won't actually progress until this basement dwelling mutant is either knocked out or murdered. And with my weapons inaccessible at the moment, doing this with explosives only seemed impossible. 
And yeah, technically it was impossible, but thanks to this conveniently placed campfire, I could pretty much just stand back and watch as this man's thirst for violence ultimately led to his own doom. You know, Forrest Gump once said, life is like a box of chocolates, but I disagree. Life is a lot more like accidentally punching a horse in the mouth while you're trying to steal it. Don't ask me why, it just is. Thanks to the countless hours of testing this mission in TGB, I knew my way around the battlefield quite well. To put it simply, you really just want to get rid of these two specific enemies early on so that they can't pose any issues later in the pursuit. And after that, since the demolitionist can kill whoever he likes, success is but a few well-placed molotovs away. And yeah, that's really all the easy stuff out of the way. Beyond this point, it was back to pulling my hair off my skull and questioning the meaning of life all over again. But regardless, I guess I had to be thankful because progress had been made, and it was finally time for the demolitionist and his employers to take a short walk in a pretty town. Although for some, the walk would be a lot shorter than expected. Now it don't feel right. I could have told you. Let's see if the demolitionist has got this one in him. I'm just slightly worried about this one because of the uh, inevitable dead eye section at the end, but besides that, it's really just standard goings-ons for now. Guy on the roof might need a little bit of... Oh my god, I might die here, actually. You're just dying. No, we're good. Oh, did, he... did I just make him jump off the roof? Hell yeah, dude. Suicide strats. Is this an enemy? It is. Damn, looks like we're gonna be using majority of the dynamite. Alright, here we go. Hello? Oh, kick it. There we go. Oh no, this is bad! I forgot there was like three dudes in there, whoops. I'll just chuck one of these boys in here. Problem solved. Is there still gonna be a guy there for me? Or did I take him out? Hey man. Oh, he's still there, all right, okay. Ah! Didn't leave nothing for me. Oh shit, Micah's dialogue actually changed there. All right, one dynamite stick left. Oh god. Okay, let's do it. I, I probably should have took a tonic first, whoops. Oh, hang on a second. I gotta put this cat out of this room. <laughs> She's going crazy. Let's go, brother. Any last words? Any final statements? Wibble and wobble? Okay. Sounds good to me, mate. All right, cool. Let's go. You're being escorted out of here. God, she sheds so much hair, it's unbelievable. Let's chuck one down there, get both of them. Can we get both of these guys if I time it right? Yes, yes. That's what we like to see. We'll get this bloke here. I feel bad about taking the horse out too, but look, he made that decision for himself when he sided with the wrong team. This mission was clearly chaotic in general, but I knew the real deal breaker here would be the way that it ends. We were fast approaching yet another Deadeye section, the absolute worst and most inflexible portions of this video game, quite literally the antithesis of freedom itself. I fear no man, but that thing. All right, oh wait, whoops. Oh, the number keys aren't working. Oh no, worst case scenario, worst case scenario. That's right, worst case scenario indeed. Although I can't lie, it's a scenario I kind of saw coming considering the reputation of Force Deadeye. I know Rockstar's just trying to make us look cool for these parts and I do appreciate the gesture, but the option to look a little less cool sometimes would be great too, you know? I decided with help from Chad that there really wasn't much more I could experiment with here and that my best option would be to attempt to disarm the enemy by shooting his gun and then take him out using explosives if I got the chance. So I left the mission, equipped my revolver instead of a sword off shotgun so I could have a more precise shot, and repeated all of my steps until I was face to face once again with our new obstacle. Shoot the gun barrel. All right. Let's do that. And boop. I fucking shot him in the head, how? No, I, I just don't, I just don't. No, no, please don't continue the mission. Please, no, I have to do that all again. 
No, I have to do that all again because for some reason it registered as shooting him in the head. Okay. Oh my god, I haven't saved in ages. <laughs> okay, let's test my competence here. Please don't accidentally shoot the man in the head, even though I clearly hit the barrel. All right, here we go. Oh, why is it the volcanic pistol? God damn it. Did I do it? Yes, okay, we've done it. Nice, nice, nice. You go for it, Micah. You do your thing, fella. He is standing there so clueless as to what to do. Come on. Precision shots, Micah. Pretty sure you just shot through Bill's neck, but we'll take it. And there is Sean, unfortunately, in a bad way. Beautiful stuff, everybody. Couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sucks we had to use a gun, even though we're not usually allowed to, but it's not a kill without an explosive, and that's what we're looking for. Bitches! Don, I need you to stay calm. Get down here now! We'd come a long way with the demolitionist by this point. And while he wasn't nearly as charming as the bug had been, and provided significantly more pain than the brawler ever did, I had to respect the persistence to do things his way. This challenge had inflicted so many more restrictions than what I was expecting it would, but I believed I was leaving this chapter mentally stronger as a result. So here we were, living out the Demolitionist's final shift with the Vandalin gang, his last few hours of the contract ticking by, the last job, the final stand. Just a mission away from riding back to the loft, kicking off his boots, and cracking open a coldie on a fine summer afternoon. It's just too bad that this final mission had to be hell in fucking carnet. Got up to this part this If we can get Holy shit man, what? Something in a second. Limited ammo. Going to die. It didn't let me pull up my weapon. That's not that's not my fault. I don't want to die, it's like I'm Okay, yeah, you just every time I do something. I took that one away from me. I thought I was No. Wrong weapon. Okay, let's get a quick agonizing pain that induces irreversible mental damage checklist, shall we? Unavoidable dead eye encounter? Check. Inability to switch to desired weapon using number keys? Check. Mission companion that stands still and watches you get decimated time and time again without so much as lifting a finger in reply? Check. Are you winning, son? No. I'm tired. So, how exactly was I going to kill these guys with a throwable explosive when them and their evil Deadeye section stood between me and my success? Well, first I did what any sensible person does when they're faced with somebody they don't like. I tried lobbing a Molotov cocktail through their fucking window. This didn't work though, unfortunately, since these windows aren't actually dynamic panes of glass that can be broken. They're only textures, for show. Hey, this didn't stop me from trying though, I seemed pretty damn convinced that something could be thrown through these windows, and it's uh, pretty safe to say that John copped a lot of punishment as a result. No, John! Surely I'm on the right track, right? That is sad. <laughs> At least, if I get completely st That's going- John, look, one day we're gonna look back on this moment and you're gonna thank me for the for the pain we've endured here today. Beyond these few things I'd tried, I was already pretty much out of ideas and ready to call it a day. I suppose it was mostly because of my prior experiences with Dead Eye Sections, but yeah, everything I did just felt futile and hopeless, which left me pretty tempted to just take the one forbidden pistol kill and move on. But you see, the thing is, I couldn't do that. Chat had faith in me still after all this time, and they believed in the Demolitionist, which in turn granted me some belief in myself too. I ended the stream that night, defeated for the moment, but not forever. Because tomorrow, we were coming back with a plan.
Nope, still didn't have a plan. I mean, what the fuck are you meant to do here, really? Can't throw explosives through windows, fire can't spread through walls, these doors are locked, John is a useless sack of garbage. I mean, the disadvantages really just kept stacking up. You couldn't shoot a fart out of your own ass! The only thing that stopped me from walking into that room Pulling out a firearm and failing the challenge right there was a report from chat. Rumors of an apparent solution to this problem were circulating now. Tales of brave individuals that had reportedly taken on this beast while I'd been sleeping on the job. A solution to this particular forced Deadeye section had apparently been found. The catch was that I didn't want to know how. Call me a fool, call me a brain dead idiot if you will, but just knowing that this was technically possible was enough to keep me in the game. After a while of retrying basically everything I'd already done before, the tunnel vision I'd had for this mission was slowly lifted by the confirmation that a solution was out there. I don't really know beyond fire spreading what I'm gonna try, so... I don't really know if I'm gonna need one dynamite stick or something. Wait! I think I know what to do. No, there's no way. I'm gonna do something really, really dumb once we get there, and I'm- I'm pretty- I'm pretty curious. I think I know what to do. You guys are gonna laugh at me if- if you see what I do and it's not the solution in a second, but don't laugh at me, guys. I'm going in. <laughs> if this has- <laughs> if this is nothing, it's gonna look so dumb. Alright. Cause- there's some, there's the Hosea mission in the bar where you can throw things through the floor and it kills the guy, but that was never the solution in TGB because obviously the focus isn't killing. So I'm thinking maybe if we throw through the floor, it might work. I don't know why that flashed through my mind, but thanks dude. Uh, oh my, <laughs> holy shit. We just fucking wall banged him. What the? <laughs> what the fuck? Wait, it's just where they're located on the floor now, I guess. Wait. <laughs> Please be something. That'd be so dope to explain in the video if that's actually something. <laughs> but I don't think it is. Is that spreading through the floor? Oh. Are they screaming? There's a- did I- did I actually- is that it? That's definitely a new X. That is a fucking sick strat, if so. I think the other one's there? The Hosea thing is what really made me think of that as well. Dude. What a sick strat. Really shows how much time you put into it as well, because for a second there I was thinking like, how the hell are we gonna do this? But that makes a lot of sense. It actually seems really obvious now. That's really, really cool. I think there's still one of them alive though, isn't there? The Demolitionist has brought about some really, really good strats. Like, ones that you wouldn't even see in TGB because you're allowed to kill people in this, so it brings like a completely different element. Have I not burnt every square inch of that room? Where is that other guy standing? All right, all right, all right. I know this seems like a dumb thing to do, but because I want to make sure I've got enough Molotovs for whatever comes next in the mission. I think I'll just fail and then um, go back. Got to listen out for some screaming. There we go. That is just, that is, that is sick. I'm just so glad we figured that out. I mean, and I'm glad that you guys didn't tell me because that was genuinely. John? Oh, thank you, John. Go for it, fella beautiful really couldn't go much better than that i just want to take a second to emphasize how rare it is for dead eye sections to have any sort of flexibility in how you complete them at all when rockstar games is insisting that you give somebody a third nostril they're pretty damn persistent about it we were beyond lucky to get off with just the disarm in roads but this one right here would have been a forced kill no matter what had that strat never been found so basically what i'm saying is Let's get a round of applause for Twitch chat for pulling us through these hard times. What a group of valiant, lion-hearted legends we have here. And with that, the Demolitionist had completed his final shift with the Vandalin gang. Cash in hand, money under mattress, it was another job well done. He may have only really been in it for the paycheck after all, but 
the demolitionist wasn't a completely heartless guy. Upon seeing the gang getting prepared to move camps, he decided he'd give them a hand for free this time, before returning to his humble abode at the loft. Okay, so yeah, squatters only here. Nice. Still some here. I don't think you understand who the demolitionist is. That... What did he throw at me? Did he throw his gun at me? Am I going crazy? I knew you'd come soon enough. I won't let you take my job away from me. It's really as simple as that. I know what you were about to do. I see that gun on the table. You think just because I work in demo, I'm not a uh, an observant fellow? Oh my god! I forgot about this guy. Oh my god! All right, all right, all right. Relax, relax. I give you my final gift. Arthur works in suicide prevention. <laughs> I mean, technically true. Yeah, I love how I just walk in here. This is meant to be the a new setup for the gang, and we're just basically burning it to the ground the moment we get here. We, I love me some story consistency. You know what I'm saying? Just dumping them in the lake. Arthur becomes Dexter? Question mark. I can't believe we're saying goodbye to the demolitionist. I just realized. God damn, dude. You know what? He's been a lot of fun. He's shown a lot of... He's given me the opportunity to show a lot of cool strats, and that's what I'm I'm looking forward to. You know, he doesn't get too personal with, uh, with the gang or with anybody else, really, so he didn't have the same charm that the bug did. But um, he got in there, and he was there to do a job, and I respect that. All right. Later's brother. And there we go. And that's very poetic. A, a blown up, charred body to finish it all off. Beautiful.